Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk about a really fun application in image processing called steganography. So steganography, not stenography, uh, steganography, is the art of hiding information in plain sight. So this actually derives from Greek words. Steganos means to hide or conceal and graphy means writing. I guess the first known application of steganography was when um, they shaved or, or they, they shaved somebody's head, tattooed a message on their head, let the hair grow back, and then sent them over somewhere, and then they, they shaved the head. This was in ancient Greece. <laughs> so you shave the head again, you see the message. So nobody knows it's there unless they know to shave the head. So we're gonna do something with images where, unless you really know to look for this, then you're not gonna know it's there, but um, actually, if you know to look for it, it'll be pretty easy to, to find it. Uh, although there, there's certainly ways to make it harder to find, I'm just going to show a basic technique today called uh, least significant bit image steganography. But first, let's review a little bit about image representations. So actually, I'm going to load in here a picture of my wonderful dog Theo and my cat Layla. And so we see this, this actually, if I print the shape of this, this is a, actually a three-dimensional array, um, 1,600 rows, 1,200 columns, and then three color channels. And actually, if I print out this and I get a little preview here, you'll see that the actual data um, appears to be integers. And so why do we have three three-dimensional array and, and the data is integers? Well, I have a little widget here to help show what's going on. So each pixel is actually represented by three numbers between 0 and 255. And so if you know binary, you know that um, if these are integers between 0 and 255, they can be represented by 8 bits. So this is a standard encoding of images. Um, each pixel gets 8 bits for red, green, and blue. So humans who can see color perceive color in three dimensions. Red, green, blue, or RGB is a pretty standard way of representing those dimensions, although there are others. But this is kind of the default way of doing it. And so just to show you, you know, if I'm pretty red here, then my red channel, the first one, is closer to 255 than the other ones. Uh, let's say I switch over to something more blue. You can see now the blue channel, RGB, B, blue. That is actually closer to 255. Um, if I mix everything together fully, 255, 255, 255, I get pure white, and if I go down and, and destroy everything, I get uh, zero, 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 which is pure black. All right, so that's how the data is represented. Every single pixel has three numbers. Now, what I wanna do is, is take this original image, and I am going to round every one of these numbers down to the nearest even number. Okay, so some of these are even, some of them are not. If I, if I look at this, I see, you know, I got some even numbers, 94, but some odd numbers, 89. Let me just go ahead and, and round down all the odd ones. So an 89 would become an 88, for example, 179 would become a 178. So I'll say i is equal to, and, and so one way to do this would be to say i is equal to, um, or maybe I'll say i round is equal to i minus i mod two. So you remember the mod two is taking the remainder when divided by two, which is exactly one if it's odd or zero if it's even. And so what we're gonna do is if it's odd, we're gonna subtract off the one, bring it down to the, to the nearest even. And if it's even, we're gonna subtract zero, which, which does nothing. Now, if I plot these images side by side, so the original image, and what I get after doing that rounding down to the nearest even, uh, I would challenge you to tell me which one is which, right? So I know that, that I happen to plot the, the one where I rounded down to the right here, but if I mix these up and gave one of them to you, you probably wouldn't be able to tell which one is which. So that, that's really interesting. Um, another way to kind of see this is if I look at, um, let's just look at maybe the red channel. So I'll just, this is just the red channel here. Let's look at what that is mod two. So, so that's gonna be one whenever the thing is, is odd and zero whenever it's even. And you see overall, it looks just, just like noise. So, so the the blues here are basically the even pixels, the, the yellows are the odd pixels. There's a little bit of structure here, but overall it's pretty random. And so what that tells us is, hey, if it's random uh, and you can't even see it, you can treat it kind of like noise. Um, you can also make it what you want. 
And so what we're going to do is, is treat uh, a pixel that is even as a zero in binary and treat a pixel that's odd as a one in binary. All right, so, that, so that's where we're headed. So we, we can make changes to this that we would never even notice, all right? Because you can't even see it. So if, if I change what's, what's even and what's odd, you won't notice, all right? So basically what I'm going to do is create a random one of these images or, or create um, one of these images which has the data that I want and add it back to iRound. And then that has is going Okay, so we can hide any binary data that we want, but I'm going to focus on hiding text so that we're consistent with that old school application. So I'm going to focus specifically on something called ASCII representation of characters. And so this is a way of representing some Western characters with binary. And so specifically, I look at this and I see, okay, um, there are 8-bit codes, although we're going to just focus on the 7-bit codes here. Um, and so what that means is, is each character in ASCII is represented as a number between 0 and 127. So for example, the letter lowercase letter a is represented as 97 in decimal, or 61 in hex. Now I could talk more about hex and binary and all that. That's a bit beyond the scope of this video. Um, but even if you're not that comfortable with that, that's OK. Um, Python's going to do a lot of this work for us. So let me show you what I mean. So that lowercase a, if I say, if I were to say ORD, a gives me 97, just like I saw in the table a moment ago. And, you know, but we're eventually, we're trying to get down to the ones and zeros, right? Because I want to be able to, to somehow unroll this in, into the image uh, as a sequence of ones and zeros. And so I can go one step further and say BIN of that. And that gives me the binary rep representation. So notice here that there are seven bits. And so this is 11000001. One, one, zero, 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 one. Now let's, actually, I don't remember, I need to check here what happens if um, I don't need seven bits to represent it. So what if I were to put in like an exclamation mark or something? I think it's going to not use all seven bits. Okay, so you have to be a little bit mindful of this. Notice that this one only gives me back six bits because technically an exclamation mark doesn't need seven bits because that's just the number 33. I can get away with six bits for that. So let me just make a little helper method here real quick. So maybe get binary representation of a, of a character. And I'll say, okay, so my x is equal to binary or d, whatever that character is. And actually, you know, it's giving me back this, it's this bit string. I'm going to chop off the first two, the 0b there. This is just telling me it's in binary. Um, so, so I'll chop that off, get that. Uh, let me also, it'll be convenient if I convert these to ints. So I'll say int x for x in that. Actually, before I put that in the method, let me just check my work down here. So, so I'll say here c is equal to, we'll say exclamation mark to start with. Um, oops, I meant to say, yeah, I need to chop off those first two characters. So I'm going to say a two there. Okay, there we go. So, so now I have an array of integers representing this. But I want to make sure they're all seven uh, bits, just so I know exactly where the start and end of each character is, even if I don't need all seven. So what I'll do is I'll just pad this. I'll say, okay, so here's my representation. And I'll say x is equal to, I'll just pad it on the left with zeros. Doesn't change change the number. Uh, pad it on the left with zeros, um, as many as there are the length of x, um, seven minus that. Okay, so if I only have six bits, six ones and zeros, I'm gonna have to put an extra one there. And now this, this should be everything. Okay, good. So, so this is going to return a list of ones and zeros. So return a list of ones and zeros um, corresponding to the ASCII encoding of a character. And you know, let's let's make another method. Um, maybe I'll call this one get binary of, of char. But I'll make another one, which is which is get binary string. where I do this for every character. So I'll say for C and S, ret plus equals get bin char C, return ret. So as an example, let's just see, see this in action. If I were to say um, X equals get bin char 
steganography. And let's print that out. So there's my hidden message in binary. All right. So now we got to put this inside of the image. So what I'll do is let me make another little method here. Um, basically, I'm going to make this image and, and add it back to the rounded down version. Okay. So I'm going to do something like this to start with. So let me call this method um, encode. So it'll, it'll take in an image and then it'll take in a string. So actually, I often like when I'm writing a method to, to kind of call the shots up front. So I'll say what this method is supposed to do. So, so this is supposed to hide the string s in its ASCII representation um, inside of the least significant bit of i. Okay. Uh, by the way, the reason the reason is called the least significant bit, just to show you. Um, if I were to look at, for example, 67 binary representation versus 66, notice that they're exactly the same except for the last bit is different. Okay, so so that's why we call it the least significant bit. It's it's the bit in the ones place. It's always going to be a zero if the number is even. It's always going to be a one if the number is odd. So we're going to round down first. We're, we're basically going to get rid of the least significant bit. It's going to be zero everywhere. But then we're going to add some ones back wherever we have those in, in the binary representation. Okay, so that's what I do. So first parameter here is going to be an image with so many rows and columns is going to have a red, green, blue channel. Um, this is often called the carrier in steganography free context. So I'll call it that. So carrier image, it's going to carry the hidden data. Um, and then this is, is the hidden message. And so what I'll do first is, is I'll just call this, this little method I made. So I'll say X is equal to get binary string of S. And actually, I'm also going to convert that to a NumPy array because what I'll do in a moment is, is just add that into the image. So this actually, if we look at, actually, I want to double check this. If I look at the type of this image here, when I first loaded this, yeah, okay, so this is an unsigned integer with eight bits, u int eight. So let me make sure that that's the type that I'm working with here. So I'll say step one is get the binary string that I want to hide. Okay, now step two is, is um, round down the image to the nearest even. So I'll say i round is equal to i minus i mod two. So I've already done that. Um, step three is uh, put the binary data in some systematic order in the image. So if I look at this, this image I that I had, let, let me print out maybe the first row, maybe first couple of rows. Um, so I'll say, okay, row zero, maybe zero to one. There's still too many numbers there. Um, okay, that's fine. But that's enough to kind of to see. So if I were then print i.flatten, um, this is a way to, to, I guess they call it raveling. Let me see, I think that's another name for it, ravel. Yeah, uh, this is it's the opposite of unravel. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, is take this data and go basically inner row by inner row and just lay it out in order. So it's a way to take, it's basically going row by row, but yeah, it's going row by row in the image. Um, it's also called raster order and then taking RGB, 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 RGB. So it's going top to bottom, row to row, basically the order that we would read um, English text. And it's, it's arranging all the pixels of the image in that order from top to bottom, left to right. So it's gonna go boom, 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 boom. And so that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll start encoding the first le letter in the upper left, and we'll keep going and keep going and keep going. And so we, we're certainly not gonna need most of these rows. Most of the message probably is gonna get hidden up here in the upper left. But as long as we have some systematic order. Now, if you're trying to be a little sneakier, you could shuffle it up, right? You could have some kind of cipher key that 
um, tells you which rows and columns, which order to visit them. So, so you could actually mix this up a little bit. But here I'll, I'll just do the systematic order from you know, left, right, top, down. So what I'll say is, okay, um, I round equals I round dot flatten. Some people prefer ravel, the opposite of unraveling. Um, and then what I'll do is I say I round, okay, fine. I've put this down to one, one dimension. And then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, the first, you know, however many elements there were, however many bits there were in X, um, I will add those in and into those positions. So again, I'm probably not gonna use the vast majority of the pixels and, and color channels that I have available to me, but I'll use however many bits I need starting at upper left. I'll add this in and now I can unravel it. I can go back and I can say, okay, I round is equal to MP dot reshape. I round, I dot shape. Actually just return that. So this is, is, is adding in the hidden bits, right? So, so I rounded everything down, I've got a clean slate. Now I'm gonna add on wherever there's supposed to be a one, I'm going to add that on, okay? So let's, let's just see if this message works or if, if this method runs and then, then I have to make a decode method to, to get my secret message back. So I'll say I encode is equal to encode I steganography. Okay, so it ran. Um, let's just look at it just to see. So I don't really notice anything different but somehow there's a hidden message here. Okay, we're just about ready to decode now, but there's one more thing that we need to take into consideration. And that's, we need some way of marking when the string ends, because when we decode this, we need to know when we're done, because we're gonna be reading this seven values at a time, one character for every seven. But how do we know that, that we're finished? And, and the way we do this is we add on something called a null terminator. So I'll say ret plus equals zero times seven add on null terminator, which you'll see this in the ASCII table too. Um, this is a convention. If the seven bits are all zero, it's representing the number zero, this means the string is finished. So that's called the null terminator. So just make sure that, that I actually end my messages with seven zeros. Okay, so, so I just tacked on the seven zeros there. Now I'll know when I'm actually done. Okay, so let me start to mock up a decoder now. Uh, I'm gonna do the opposite of what I did. I'm going to first ravel this. So I'm gonna say, okay, my decoding is equal to the encoding flatten. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm gonna go until I see the null terminator. So I'll say, uh, still reading. I'll use a while loop. So I'll say, while I'm still reading, um, I'll go ahead and I'll take out, so this index tells me the index where I'm starting looking at a particular character. I know that I want to look at every seven bits, so I'm going to take out every seven uh, values out of this image. So I'll say I decoded, or yeah, I decoded um, I to I plus seven, so, so I'm going to slice that out. I'm also going to take uh, the mod two here, because I know that I'm looking at the least significant bit. So if it's, if it's odd, I want to treat it as a one. If it's even, I want to treat it as a zero. Uh, let me just look at maybe the first 10 of these. So I'll print that out. Um, and of course I need to increment I as well. So I'm moving along. Okay. So there is my first character. There's my second character, third character, fourth, etc. Uh, but I need to do just a little bit more work to convert these actually back to ASCII. So the first thing I'll do is, is actually recognize that you know, it'd be helpful to go back to a decimal representation first, or, or really um, just a, a regular int number out of this binary. Now, there's probably a quick way to do this in Python, but let me actually do it out a little bit just so we have a quick binary view. But so in binary, no, this is the ones place, this is the twos place, fours place, eights place, they always double, 16, 32, 64. So I can make a little array of places. So I'll say maybe two to the six minus i for i in range seven. Um, let's, let's check on that. Is that what I said it would be? Yeah, okay. So, so on the left, it's the 64th place, 32th place, 16, eight. So what I can do is, okay, I'll do this right before the loop. And it's okay. This this number I'm going to make as, um, 
I'm going to say that is the sum of the places times C. So those who know the lingo, this is called a dot product, but I'm just saying, okay, look, this one, 64 times 1 plus 0 times 32, no 32. So 64 plus 16 plus 2 plus 1. And so that ends up being, so if I print these up back to back, so I like to do this sort of stuff for debugging just to make sure I'm on the right track. Okay, so the number 83. So 83, 16, 101. Let's just remember the couple, first couple, 83, 16. So 83, so I can have less, great. Um, I'm gonna say 83, 116. Lowercase t, that's great. And guess what, Python will actually do that for us too. So if I were to say print C, C-H-R-C. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> so it looks like we're on the right track here. I just need to go one step further and note and, and realize when I'm done here. So I'll say, you know, um, if C is equal to zero, then I will say still reading is false. Okay, so now I can actually basically do the fully fleshed thing. Okay, there we go. So steganography, and then I have my null terminator at the end. Okay, so, that, so that's it. Um, let me just put this inside of a method to encapsulate it. Oops. Um, so I'm going to pass along some encoded message. And what I'll do is, is okay, I don't need to print this stuff out for debugging. What I'll do instead is I will, um, if it's not the null terminator, I will accumulate that character onto the end of some string that I'm building. And so let's just check to see if that works. So if I say decode, I uh, encode. There we go, sticking off for you. So there you have it. Um, and again, we, we can't see the, the presence of that hidden message. And maybe I'll try something a little bit longer here. So let's say, I'll make some other image here. I'll say I2 is equal to encode I, uh, let's see. Hello, I hope you are enjoying this tutorial on steganography. Okay, and so again, here's the image. Shouldn't really notice anything. Um, and if I print decode I2, I get it back. Perfect. So there's our, our hidden message. Um, if I go back and I try to decode the original image, I just get gibberish because it's, like I said, it's, it's basically, I mean, you look back at this, basically random, maybe a little bit more systematic in some places, but basically random bits. And then eventually, you, you know, with, with some chance you'll reach the null terminator and it'll stop. Okay, there's just one more thing I wanna show you about how to save your images with the hidden data. So there's a couple things to be aware of here. Um, I found I was getting some, some kind of weird, annoying things happening with Matplotlib's library, so I'm gonna use um, a library called Scikit Image instead. So you, you can pip install this with um, Scikit Image. But anyway, so let's say that I wanted to save my hidden thing. Um, I'll call it maybe aspiration.jpg. So there's a method called imsave. So first parameter is the name of the file. Second parameter is the image that I'm trying to save. So my aspiration for everyone is that they enjoy this tutorial. So I'll say skimage.io.imsave aspiration.jpg and I will save my i2 there. So let's go ahead and try to load this back. So if I were now to say I load equals skia, sorry, skimage.io.im read aspiration.jpg and let's look at it. Certainly looks fine. What about when I go to decode it? Well, it's complete gibberish. So what happened? Well, it turns out JPEG is what's known as a lossy decoding te technique. It's actually making small alterations to the pixels as well um, that you won't notice so that it can use fewer bits to represent them. Hopefully I'll get to do a tutorial on JPEG at some point too. Um, my first big project in college was, was making a JPEG decoder from scratch. But for now, we'll take that as a granted and we'll notice that 
okay, JPEG is, is doing its own little alterations that are interfering with our alterations. Um, so we're not gonna get back the message that, that we tried to encode. So I have to use a lossless encoding. So PNG is an example of a lossless encoder. So it, it can compress it, but it's not going to change the data that's there. So I wanna do it like this. I get the message back just fine. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will include a link to the code from my uh, video page and um, let me know if you have any questions. Enjoy.